What's going on guys? Frey here, back with another spring steelhead fishing video for you. Gonna be center pin float fishing as usual, trying to get the bobber down on video. Got Trost and Woodward coming up, so should be a good time. But in this video, I also wanna introduce you guys to a survey that I'd really like you guys to help out with. Uh, if you fish Michigan at all, uh, any of the tributaries, um, you can record your fish, your steelhead that you catch, their length and their fin clips, and you can record it on a nice convenient app and it'll really help out fisheries managers. So. Uh, I'm going to be doing an interview in today's video with the man who's in charge of it, Dan O'Keefe from Michigan Sea Grant. So if you stay tuned, he'll answer some questions you might have and tell you guys how to do it, how to measure your fish. Uh, we'll try to showcase that in the video and show you, you know, some of the basic stuff that some people might not know, you know, how to tell a male from a female and how to tell if the fin's clipped, see if it's stocked fish or wild. So um, hopefully you guys will join in and help out with that. Uh, we could always use uh, more data from rivers. There's lots of data. From the big lake but river catch data is pretty limited so you guys can help contribute to that and um, yeah so stay tuned for that and also hopefully we'll catch some nice fish to show you yeah this is a good shot right here we got dan hooked up my buddy knocked the biggest one i had on Oh. Hate to hear that. Looks like we got this one under control. Excellent. All right, so Dan's gonna show us uh, how we how we can measure and um, report this catch here. Jig and waxworm. So if you have to measure a fish in the net, that's okay if you're alone, if you're in a place with sandy banks or somewhere that's gonna hurt the fish. But since we got some nice smooth grass here that's a little damp, we'll take the fish out first. Check for fin clips. The fish has its adipose fin, dorsal, ventral, Pectoral fins are all there. Hold on, fish. Just stretch it out from tip to tail. Mouth closed, 25 inches on the dot. And it's a hen. You can see it's got a little bit of a plump belly here. No hook jaw. And check the fins on both sides. We got the pectoral fin and the ventral fin intact. Fish is ready to go. That's all it takes. That fish cooperated pretty good. You're going to the middle? To the right? end of the pinch tail. Pinch so make tail. it as long as you can. Okay. That's the word, everyone. Pinch the tail as long as you can. That's right Mouth there on the closed. nose. To the nearest quarter inch. Yep. 25. And, and all the fins there. Looks like we got all the fins on this guy. Wild. That'll be a buck. Got yep. the little hook jaw. Nice color on that fish. Yep. Sweet. Nice work.
Alright guys, just scored this beautiful buck on the fly rod. That is a beautiful stalker. The adipose clip, that's what we're looking for in these stock fish. Right there, you can see where that was clipped. Yep, just a little stub, not much left, and then check all the fins anyways. But I mean, look at that. Got the snout closed, we're gonna pinch the tail. Get that measurement to the quarter inch. Looks like 28 and a half. Does Beautiful. that work for you? Yep, that's All right. great. All right guys, so I've got Dan O'Keefe here. Um, just to start off, Dan, do you want to just explain your role, kind of what you do? Yeah, so I work with Michigan Sea Grant and MSU Extension, and basically we interpret science for people who need it. Uh, being in Great Lakes Fisheries, I tend to work with uh, big lake anglers, charter captains, uh, trollers, but recently I've started to work more with river fisheries, uh, which is, is really cool because I do a lot of river fishing myself. And really the steelhead fisheries are completely dependent on what happens in the big lake. And even though we, we spend a lot of time on the rivers watching what steelhead do in the rivers, uh, it's really important to understand what's going on in the big lake too because that affects uh, steelhead runs. Uh, the prey av availability out there, the alewife, uh, are really critical in Lake Michigan right now. Uh, so that's kind of what, what we do is uh, you know, try to educate people and, and help them understand what's going on. All right, so we're here to talk about the Great Lakes Angler Diary and kind of encourage uh, the viewers of this channel to participate. So can you give just a brief overview of the program and then maybe some reasons why? Yeah, uh, the Angler Diary program is uh, really exciting because it allows anglers to take data on the fish they catch. Uh, what we're most concerned about now is uh, looking at the prevalence of clip fish because recently all the clip fish uh, in Lake Michigan stock since about 2018 have been clipped with that adipose fin clip and so anglers can, can readily tell right away if they have uh, a wild or a stocked fish. And uh, what we're doing now is, is just asking people to record that data uh, using an app that we have uh, or online at glanglerdiary.org. So um, it's, uh, it's a chance for you to contribute to your fishery. Uh, we, we really want to understand um, where the wild fish are coming from and how the stocked fish are impacting different fisheries. It's not necessarily uh, like there's a good or bad answer when you're looking at the percent wild fish out there. Uh, we just want to understand where the stock fish and where the wild fish are making the best contribution to the fisheries. All right, so you've been doing this program for about what, one or two seasons now? Yeah, the la last year we really ramped up uh, with steelhead in particular. So we've really only had uh, two seasons now of good steelhead data in the rivers. But we'd been doing it with uh, salmon, mostly in the Big Lake, uh, with Chinook salmon going back to 2012. So uh, we, we do have uh, a lot of data on, on a lot of Great Lakes fish too. Um, can you let us know what river systems you guys are really looking for people on? What areas are you're having yeah. less, pre less representation so far and just encourage people from those fisheries maybe to join in? Yeah, for sure. We, we've had really great participation on some rivers and then others that are, are kind of lacking. And some of the big fisheries that we could really use more are, are the Grand. Uh, you know, a lot of people fish the Grand River below 6th Street and, and we don't have that many fish getting recorded there. Uh, so the Grand System too, Rogue River upstream uh, would be a great one to get more data on. Um, we have a lot of people reporting data on the main branch of the Paramarquette. But the Big South is one that we'd really like to understand better because we know we have some stock fish there. That's the only part of the PM system that does get stocked. And we also have a lot of natural reproduction uh, coming out of the Big South too. So we'd really like more participation in the Big South. Uh, St. Joe, we do have some, some great uh, uh, people submitting data on the St. Joe now, but we could use some more. Uh, so the St. Joe would be another good one to get a few more people on. All right, um, so obviously um, those are some ones that we definitely want to see some more people on, but in general, anyone who fishes in Lake Michigan can join this, is that right? Yeah, and we actually cast a little wider net. Uh, it's, we we're branding it the Michigan River Steelhead Project, so uh, we do have a few people on Lake Huron tributary streams, and actually quite a, a big group on the Clinton River that flows into Lake St. Clair. So, uh, 
the Clinton River is a strong group. The Huron River further south, we think that's almost all uh, stock fish in the Huron River, but we do have a few people uh, contributing data there, and, and it would be nice to get a few more. We even have uh, a few folks up in Lake Superior drainage, and we would like to get more data from some of those Lake Superior streams, particularly the ones that do have a mix of stocked and wild fish, because a lot of the Superior streams are mostly wild fish. Okay, awesome. Um, and then the big question that a lot of people are going to have is where is this data going and there are going to be people that are concerned yeah. that um, they're, they don't want to report their honey hole, they don't want to report that they caught 15 fish in a, a certain river that they don't want other people to know about. So can you just kind of speak to those people? Yeah, absolutely, because I'm the, I'm the same way. I've seen some of the, the online reporting apps and things that really take all of your GPS data. We, we don't do that. We, we ask for the location that you caught your fish, but by location, we mean the river you're fishing. That, that's about as fine grained as it usually gets. Uh, some of the rivers we subdivide in a few different sections, like the upper Muskegon versus the lower Muskegon, those, those big systems. But we are not taking data on the holes that you're fishing. And another thing is, uh, no one's gonna see this except for us on the back end who are doing the data analysis for several months after those fish are caught. Uh, we do a lengthy quality control uh, procedure where we'll actually survey people to make sure all their data are complete and accurate. And again, what we're looking for is, is broad location, just which river you were fishing, which stretch of river. And we also want the, the length of the fish and whether or not it has any fin clips. But that really shouldn't, you know, give away any secret spots. And the, the data that we'll report back to people after we analyze it, it, it isn't specific to you. It's all what we call de-identified. So we'll just say that we had 10 people fishing, you know, the, the Rogue River, and they caught 80 fish, uh, and X percent of them were wild. So it's not the kind of thing that, that um, we're really concerned about giving away spots. Uh, but again, we're also cognizant that there are some smaller tree streams, like if there's a, a small feeder creek that you don't want people to know about, chances are we're not going to have enough fish from that body of water to really say a whole lot about anyway. And I, I am cognizant, you know, if there's an unknown stream that shows up in the database, uh, uh, I, I don't necessarily broadcast those results far and wide. We're really looking at the bigger rivers like the Manistee and the, the Paramarquette and the Muskegon, the ones that are, are well known, those are the ones that we're going to be sharing a lot of data with a lot of people. But again, all in that de-identified format. All right, so all that being said, um, how do we sign up? And then once we catch fish, how do we participate? Yeah, uh, uh, just go to glanglerdiary.org and you can register. Once you've registered online, uh, you can use either our, our website that you can access on any laptop or phone, or you can get an, an app. Uh, you can sign up directly as well if you go to the App Store for iOS, uh, or if you uh, get an Android app, if that's your thing. Uh, we have both available. And once you've signed up, all that you need to do is take data on every trip that you take for steelhead throughout the course of the year. And it, it is important to record data for every trip that you take, even if it's a skunk, because we are trying to ca compute catch rates. So that, that's why we need every trip from the time you sign up uh, to be recorded. And we also need data, of course, on every fish, because it's important not to bias the results. Uh, for example, if you only take data on the large fish you catch, obviously, then we're gonna have biased data. We're not gonna have any data on those smaller fish. Or if people are like, oh, I, I caught a bunch of wild fish today, I'm gonna record all those, but then they don't catch the, they don't record the stocked ones they caught a couple days ago. That's obviously a big problem for the data. So we do need that commitment to be consistent uh, in recording every trip and every fish. And I should say, uh, hopefully it, it really is user-friendly. It does not take very much time to record the data. Uh, once you get your fish measured, you take a look at them. Uh, the user interface, especially on the apps, is, is pretty easy to, to go in there. You got one screen, you record how many people fished, uh, where you're fishing, how long you fished, and then the measurements and, and fin clips for each of the fish you caught. Is it fair game to ask about, like, should we keep, should we release wild fish and keep clip fish? Is that something you want to get into or is that? Sure, I mean, 
I think everyone makes their own decisions about keeping fish and we're not really trying to influence people to catch and release versus catch and keep fish. If, it, if it's legal and you want to do it, do, do whatever you want to do. But um, we do ask questions on our survey about people's preferences for catch and release and, and we're, we're interested in getting information on what people choose to do on their, on their own. And we have seen that some people are preferentially keeping the clipped fish. So what I will say is if you do want to keep clipped fish, uh, you can take the snout or the head of that steelhead that was clipped. There's a microscopic coat of wire tag in there that has really important information that we need to get back uh, to the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, via DNR freezers that are located in a lot of bait shops around the state. Uh, so if you can save the heads of the clipped fish you catch, we will get some really valuable information about where that fish was stocked because it's not necessarily true that the fish you're catching say in the Grand River were stocked in the Grand River. There is a fair amount of straying and without getting those coated wire tags returned from anglers on the river, right now that there aren't biologists, there aren't creel clerks that are going out and collecting those fish from rivers. What they're doing is collecting fish that are coming in from the big lake fishery. So we can really get a lot of important information. So that's the only thing I'd say. It's not like it's right or wrong to, to keep uh, clipped fish versus unclipped fish. But if you do keep your clipped fish, those can give another really important piece of information for biologists. All right, I think that pretty much covers everything. So if you have anything that you personally want to add. Oh, uh, uh, just that so we, we really, really appreciate that so many people have stepped up. We've had over 300 people register for this program. Uh, we've had data coming in from uh, 1,500 steelhead this season and counting. And it sounds like a ton of fish, but again, we have certain rivers where we have a whole lot of data. We have others that we'd really like to plug some holes in, like the Grand, the Muskegon too. We could use some more fish on the Muskegon, the St. Joe, um, and, and that big south of the PM in particular. So uh, really appreciate any help people can, can give. And you know, we hope to give something back to people too. We have a dashboard feature there that lets you analyze your own data and kind of see through the years how your catch rates differ on different streams. So. We're trying to put features in there like that are, that are helpful. And we also have kind of a community going where we do Zooms with anglers from all around the state a few times a year. So you get to hear reports on, on how things are going on the east side of the state or up in the UP or on the Manistee, the Muskegon. So uh, we, we try to, to have it um, you know, be an educational experience for people who are participating, not just looking at their own fish, but uh, we also have biologists on there. We, 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 hear a lot of the emerging science and we get engaged with people who are making the decisions uh, about regulations, about stocking and uh, about the future of our fisheries. So it's really, it's not just about the data, it's about uh, giving data to biologists, yes, but also educating people and really engaging them with the management process. So it's been great. Uh, really appreciate all the help so far from all the people who've stepped up. All right, thanks a lot, Dan, for coming out and kind of giving people a perspective. Um, and uh, I strongly encourage you guys to do this. I've been doing this, and kind of like what he said, one of the main reasons that I really like doing it is because it's like an awesome fishing journal to have. You can go back on the app and you can, you know, look through and see how many fish you caught in this day. It's just a good way to keep track of things, and also you're helping out the fishery. So I strongly recommend it. You know, it doesn't take much time to just measure your fish and get a little extra data to help these guys out. So I really hope you guys join in on it. Tail, and pinch that snout a little bit. Like 26 and a half. Just a little jig and waxy. All the fins. All the fins on. Wild fish. Zoom, zoom in a little bit and try to get her swimming across the clear water here. Yeah. How's that look? Good.
Beauty fish right there. Oh. oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yes! It should have been there and it was. Oh, it's a big dude. I got the worst book set in the world on this. It should have been there and it was. Well, I guess we gotta unload the camera. <laughs> Here, you wanna film it all? A little bit of wood danger. Rose loves to throw in the wood. He's not out of the wood yet. He's trying his hardest to stir the entire hole. <laughs> They're still up in the fast water, even though we got that cold. There. Wait, hold him up. Tell us about him. Last look. Thought we caught the same buck that Woodward just had, but after video review, it's a different <laughs> fish. <laughs> that thing soaked me. Smoled or something happened. Chub. That's fish. That's fish. What's going on? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good fish. Yo, you want to film, Trost? Sure. What, is this fish chrome? Yeah. Just re-rigged with 10 pound, right? Yeah. I'm going to run up on the gravel bar. Looks chrome. Hey, this is what we love to see you guys. Fresh wild steelhead, no fin clips. And um, yeah, that's an absolute beauty. We measured him, we're gonna send it back. Nice brown. <laughs>